evening, everybody. Silver Alt here. Uh, going to be doing this evening, as per the title page, obviously, Inferno. Now then, Inferno's character is described as a as a bit of a hot-headed brawler. Um, he does love a good fight. Um, you could almost accuse him of deliberately starting fires just so he can put them out. Um, it's a darker side of a hero complex. Uh, but yes, he's very eager to fight. Um, he loves mixing it up with Decepticons. You know, for someone who's supposed to be an emergency rescue vehicle, he's not much of a rescuer. Um, he's a fighter. Now, Inferno first shows up in Series 2, and he's just randomly there. Like many of the, uh, the Series 2 Transformers, he's just arrived. No, I'm just popping along to say hi. Oh, you've got a war going on? Go for it! Uh, so, completely without explanation... That was good. Completely without explanation, Inferno is just there. And it's the one... Uh, I believe it's the episode where the Insecticons all power up, and um, Inferno is standing side by side with Jazz being very valiant. Um, Inferno does get relegated to the role of... Well, obviously Fire Truck. Um, a lot. Uh, for instance, when the Dinobots uh, half destroy Autobot headquarters in uh, Dinobot Islands, Inferno is one of the ones that helps clean it up. Um, and he does uh, he does show up later on in the episodes in the episode Dinobot Island to um, help stop the timelines by uh, shooting horses in the face with flame retardant foam. Uh, most famously, of course, Red Alert is very good... Fr uh, not Red Alert, sorry. Inferno is very good friends with Red Alert. Um, and puts up with his overburdening paranoia. Even even when Red Alert is going, You did, you want my job, you hate me, blah, 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 blah. Um, Inferno still manages to defend him. And still manages to be his friend, instead of smacking him in the gob. Uh, which is what he frankly deserves. Um, Inferno doesn't really come into it after Series 2. Um, I don't think he's got any speaking roles whatsoever in Series 3. But he he does have a brief cameo in the Headmaster series, but he doesn't say anything. Okay, moving on to the comics. Now then, uh, Inferno it actually joins up with uh, Broadside. Um, helping out Broadside's team uh, monitoring the Decepticon activities on Earth through, I think it was a space station. Uh, it was when Galvatron resurfaced that Inferno, much preferred, comes to the, f comes to the fore. Uh, he comes out of it then, and then later on uh, he sides with Prowl and Grimlock uh, to go after Bludgeon. And Inferno is killed on the planet Klo. K-L-O. I don't know... I don't know Oh, I'm seeing my eye. I don't know where it comes from. Uh, I don't know who thought up the idea of the name Clo, because it sounds like something you do when you sneeze. But there we go. Uh, and is revived by the last Autobot. Um, no reference to Inferno, I believe, in the underbase powered continuity. Okay then. Now then, uh, his storyline is slightly different in the U. I believe it's the U.S. The U.S. comics. Because um, the Marvel, the Marvel comics and the UK comics have different storylines, and it's very much. Um, I forgot completely what I was going to say now. I've also drawn a complete blank as to whether Inferno storyline was the one I've just said in the UK comics or the American comics. Oh well, either way, because Inferno is not a huge, huge character anyway. But there we go. Uh, Inferno does come along in the Dreamwaves, and he's there with his good buddy Smokescreen. Uh, joining up with uh, Grimlock's Lightning Strike Coalition uh, during the time of the Dark... I probably can't probably see anything similar. Uh, during the time of the Dark Ages of Cybertron. Uh, now, I'm pretty sure I remember seeing somewhere a comic that showed Inferno, along with Red Alert, um, as, part of the, as part of the Autobot High Council. But I can't for the life of me... Oh, yes, I can... It's during that exact same series, actually. Yes, Inferno is part of the Autobot High Council, along with Red Alert, when Shockwave comes to power. And initially, Red Alert and Inferno are all for, yes, let's help out um, Shockwave. Uh, they do originally, of course, see the error of their ways, and come to realise that Shockwave ain't all he's cracked up to be. 
Okay, now, um, when Megatron comes to power, Inferno was defending uh, the Kuon. On Cowan. 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 K. I can't remember how it's pronounced. Um, however, uh, a ship kind of lands on him. Uh, Inferno dies a lot. Um, a ship kind of lands on him and presumably kills him, but he does survive. And he becomes one of Blaster's most trusted friends. Okay, then. Uh, even though at one point they do actually try to blame Inferno for an attempt on Blaster's life. But, of course, Inferno, being a good guy, is probably vindicated. Okay, now onto the toy. We're going to start off with the Generation 1 toy. Uh, obviously, this red fire truck. Where's that? There it is. This red fire truck. Um, was part of the second wave of Transformers, and obviously, it's a very nice fire truck. Very, very similar, I think, in certain regards to Hotspot. Um, the Protector Bots leader. Very similar to Hotspot. Okay, now I'm going to bring to attention a couple of things in this video. Uh, the first thing, I'm just going to transform Inferno now. Uh, remember how to do it, flip that bit forward, like the thing out of mask, uh, lower the legs, pop down the feet, bring about the arms, and in another thing that's very reminiscent of Hotspot is where Inferno's head is kept. And of course, in uh, Defensor, as I've said in my Defensor video, is the only Autobot, is the only combiner not to have a separate head, because of course it's already in there. Okay, where's the rest of his parts? Oh, push these up. Inferno, of course, does have, if I can fit them in, which is unlikely, there we go, there's one. And there's two uh, very funny little wings on the side of his head for some strange reason. Uh, he has popping fists, and he has a nozzle thing to go in his other hand. Now this is something that's really strange with Transformers, and it's something that's I can't quite understand it. Right? Yeah, these fall out. Right? These hands instead of, these nozzles instead of hands, right? Okay. Because Inferno, of course, isn't the only one to have them. Grapple has it, naturally. Um, Trailblazer has it. Um, Hoist has it. But then you get people like Sideswipe and Ironhide, who can retract their hands and make fancy little gizmos out of them. So why can't these guys do it? Why do these guys have to be amputees? Makes, makes no sense. Um, now then, a little bit of trivia about this toy. Something that uh, uh, I don't imagine a lot of people would know. Of course, I may, be giving, I may be insulting people's intelligence here, but a lot of people might not know this. Now, how many repaints are there of Inferno? Or correction, how many paint jobs are there of, are there of this particular toy? Most people will say two. Grapple came first, I believe, and then Inferno followed him. However, there was not two. To my knowledge, there was four. The first, well, I don't know whether it was the first one, but the, the other one, which of course, uh, the two being Inferno and Grapple, the other was um, a target master called Artfire, who was a repaint of Inferno. Um, who, for some strange reason, was companion with Nightstick, uh, and wasn't the only target master to be companion with Nightstick. And yes, before you ask, Artfile was an Autobot. Um, but he didn't come into the cartoon at all, he was only present in the uh, Japanese manga. Now there's one other. And this little bit of information, I wasn't sure if I was going to do it in this video, or if I was going to do it in one of the Constructicon videos. And I decided that because it's related to at least a toy in some way, shape or form, I'll do it to this video. Now, cast your memories back to uh, More Than Meets the Eye, the first episodes of the first series. 
When Hound and Cliffjumper have been chased by Laserbeak, uh, Hound gets run off a cliff. And an Autobot winches him up. That Autobot is identified by Cliffjumper as Hauler. Over Hauler, who appears to what who, who appears to look remarkably like Grapple, is never seen again. Uh, it was, in fact, as far as to my recollection, a, a toy that just simply never came out, which is why he was never mentioned again. However, Hauler eventually does get some fame. What I'm going to ask you to do now is cast your minds forward to Series 3, Five Faces of Darkness. You see, uh, Hauler eventually got his own toy, and he was a repaint. And he was painted in the colours of green and purple. Now, what other famous uh, what other famous Transformers are green and purple? The Constructicons. Hauler was originally a Constructicon. Now, whether this bit of information is actually uh, legitimate and canon, I'm not sure. This is just what I know, uh, or what I've read up on. Hauler was a Constructicon. But where was he? Why wasn't he with the other Constructicons, I can hear you ask. Um, assuming that any of you can actually pick your jaws off the floor at this moment in time. Because it's a bit of a revelation. Because I remember when I read it, I was like, what? Anyway, cast your minds forward to the Five Faces of Darkness. When Rodimus Prime is inside the Creation Matrix, one of the things that he sees is Optimus... is not Optimus Prime. is Megatron being created. Freeze that scene and count. There is eight Constructicons there, not six. Hauler, uh, which I believe was released through Botcon, um, was a Constructicon. And as I said, I don't know whether this is actually legitimate, but that is a storyline that um, I believe it was Botcon gave him. He was a Constructicon. Uh, they even filled it into his uh, biography, his character bio, as to why you never see him again. Uh, after the first episode, and that is because he is a long-range fuel finder. You know, he's a big divining rod, um, and that is that is how they explain away. You know, he's always never he's never around. He's always away somewhere else, usually with the fairies, um, and that is why you never see him again. And it it's also used to explain why he wasn't part of the constructor cons when they turned evil, because he was obviously off gallivanting somewhere. But that is the story behind Hauler. Um, apparently, uh, as I said, I don't know how true it is, but I just thought it was a fascinating piece of trivia. But then I am quite easily amused. I just dropped another piece off. Okay. Uh, now, anyway, on to what I think of this toy. Well, it's a very, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a nice enough toy, you know. Um, but there's not, there's nothing really outstanding about it. You know, there's nothing really that goes, oh wow, that's awesome. It's a nice toy. It's a nice display toy because it's got the, it's got virtually no articulation. Uh, the arms move up and down, kinda. Um, these white bits keep falling out. Um, the wrists turn, kinda, uh, when you don't have a gun in them. And of course, I believe this was it supposed to fire at one point because I don't think it does anymore. Oh, there you go. Mine doesn't fire. So, I don't know. Uh, but yes, a nice toy, but nothing great. Uh, you've got the original, and you've also got a reissue. Um, but I think the reissues are now becoming quite expensive as well. The newest Inferno toy is this one. Classics Inferno. Voyager class. Um, I picked this up before its release in Japan. Um, well, I tell you a lie, I got it sent to me from Japan. I didn't pick it up in Japan, I wish. And it's a Voyager class. And I remember when I saw the stock photos of this one. Um, I wasn't overly impressed, uh, but I bought it anyway because of course it's part of the classics line. Um, and uh, I would have been after the fiasco I had with energy with classics Ironhide and transforming that nightmare. Um, I was a little work dubious about this toy, but I managed to figure it out. It's actually quite simple. Um, push the two side bits in. You can't really see this, so I'll just transform him anyway. Uh, you can't really tell because he's a lot darker than his original version. Um, push the two side bits in. There's a lot of folding over of parts, doorways and arm segments uh, in this toy. But it's not, a it's not a bad design. And when I got the toy, when it eventually arrived to me, which was Saturday, um, I did immediately take a liking to it. Um, I did immediately take a liking to it. I think it's lovely. And I think it's a very nice addition to the classics range. 
but as I said, when I originally saw the stock photos, um, I was not overly impressed at all. I actually thought it was a little bit. I actually thought when, when I first saw the stock photos, I thought he's very clunky and he doesn't look very good at all. Just trying to get his head out. There we go. I thought he's very clunky. Doesn't look very nice at all. Um, but because obviously because he is a classic, I will pick him up. And there we have Classics Inferno. As I said, a nice Voyager. Um, not very complicated. In fact, actually really easy since I managed to figure him out straight away. Comes, of course, with the obligatory. Spring-loaded missile. I'll try that again because I don't even think you saw that, did you? Comes with the obligatory. Spring-loaded missile launcher. Uh, why they made his arm cannon underslung, I don't know. Uh, but it does seem to be the thing because they did it with math. they did it with the uh, animate uh, not animated sorry uh, classics Megatron as well but not not overall not a bad job not a bad job at all okay uh, yes definitely pick up classics Inferno if you can uh, it's a very nice toy uh, I'm not entirely sure of its official release date but you can pick it up on eBay now okay but that's me done for this evening. Um, Gonna obviously make this into a proper video now, but not entirely sure when I'll upload it, but there we go. Okay, but for now, this is Silvolt with Classics Inferno and G1 Inferno saying au revoir, adios, I'll video you